we have few questions um, basically um, asked by um, some of the participants. I think the first question is um, from, I think it's from Taiba, UTG0081, who is from USA. Um, he's asking, I think this question can go to Mr. Sua. What can the businesses do as far as the global competition is concerned? considering that their government have not done pronouncement to assist. Okay, thank you so much. Um, if, I, if I get the, um, I was trying to get myself unmuted, but if I get the question right, um, it is about what actions the SMEs can take, right? Um, sure. To help themselves in, in, in times where the government is not, is not intervening. Mm. Is this correct? Yeah, I think that's, that's what, what, what he meant. Okay, okay, not I think I'll just got... Yeah, I think as as discussed earlier, I think SMEs are probably the most vulnerable, right? Um, yeah. Because of the nature of their operations and um, the the strength of of the business. So so today, um, my first take on SMEs would be first, you know, look at um, what you can bring in house um, in terms of bringing in cash. If you are you know working having stuck, you know if you know people owe you you know, try to gather cash flows as much as possible. You need to bring in cash into the business. And two, you have to restructure your business um, in the sense that um, you have to, we, we, you know, expect that um, banks um, and governments may not be able to intervene. And I don't think banks rightly would definitely be happy to give money uh, to SMEs. Um, so look in-house, what can you do in terms of restructuring your business? First, you know, look at your expense lines. Um, discretionary expenses really um, would be, you have to look at expenses that really uh, can be defined, you know, focus on um, digital. You have to look, of, look for ways to partner, um, to be able to sell your businesses and your products online, your services online. Um, see how you can reach out to, to people. If you owe banks, and this is, um, really um, is a lifeline it is in your operations you know this is where you should go back and engage banks um, to find ways of restructuring your business and 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 you know there is always going to be right sizing um, people are doing it companies are doing it in the advanced economies it will catch up with us um, we have to wherever we are today to be honest if it is whether it is SMEs or corporations there is going to be right sizing in our markets. So you also, if you own a business, you run a business, it's better to look at the business and, and possibly look at, you know, right sizing. You can only do what you can afford right now. So if you may have to send some of your employees home, you know, restructure your business as much as you can, I think that is, that is very important. And, and just um, be aware, be up to date, um, you know, to be, uh, to be able to, um, you know, be one of the first movers um, to, 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 to get um, to the right place at the, at the right, be at the right place at the right time. I think that's, that would be my, my own take in, 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 in the space where banks and governments are not um, intervening. Yeah, I, 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 that's a good answer. What you've said is to work on what you can control. Uh, you have control over expenses, control it um, for now. Um, I think that answered the question. We move to the next question um, by Pamalik Ba. He said, given the monitoriums offered by banks, what are the benefits of an individual accepting loan repayment holidays? What are the benefits? Um, I think number one would be cash flows. Um, if, if you are supposed to um, finance your debt with banks and they are giving you holidays, I think it is giving you cash flow. So effectively, if you're in a sector where you were um, looking for investment, so probably this is an opportunity. So we are also saying restructure, how do you restructure a business if you cannot spend if you don't have money? So if banks are giving you holidays and this means you have excess cash you know, within the business, possibly it's an opportunity to ensure that you're able to invest you know, digitally, you know, create a marketplace online. Um, look for other ways to you know, you know, get returns. And there's always a way to to get it, um, whether you are going to go into soft liquidity investments or some kind of an asset purchase where you can turn into cash with something else um, quickly. I think um, as long as you have cash, you know, banks are giving you room 
for for for, for you to have cash in your business this is where you can um, really, really reduce your burden and in terms of service in that and also invest wisely and where you can return and poss possibly restructure your business um, we are in markets where we are you know behind in terms of digital space and digital marketing and products it's a lot online this is an opportunity to see what you can do especially with the excess cars coming through from banks okay um that's good moving to the next question um this is a personal question and people have been i saw a lot of debates going around this question considering the debt relief that is pronounced give so i i didn't get that uh, question almost i did get it um yeah I, I, yeah. The question is, um, did, did you get the question? You, you, you can say it again for Sawani, yeah? Um, the question is, there is already a pronouncement on the, the giving Gambia a debt relief. But what impact will this have and what exactly is debt relief? If we were to contextualize it for non-business people to understand, what is debt relief? What is Gambia government going to enjoy on this debt relief? Is it a holiday or is it going to be an entire relief for not paying the amount? Okay, so, so I think um, also Wani can come in later on. But first, you know, I think, um, you know, in the business, um, in generally this business that we are in, if, you know, when there is a debt relief, um, the expectation is either a cancellation of debt Okay, um, meaning, you know, there's a remission here. Um, you know, whether um, there is a cancellation or a charge or a penalty, or it could be um, um, temporal as well. So, 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 so depending on, on, on where, um, you know, the detailed pronouncements, whether it is IMF or others, and, and, and I think banks are careful uh, we have different names in terms of, you know, moratorium or suspension or deferral and, and all, 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 all that work for banks. It doesn't really mean that, you know, we will not go and pick our interest in a later date or a principal in a later date. But the relief from, um, you know, multilaterals like IMF, um, you know, it's usually um, some kind of a, um, a cancellation. So if you owe... Um, you know, IMF certain money, um, they probably could um, give you a total, um, you know, cancellation. They could give you uh, not a kind of a holiday, in my understanding. But again, this is something that um, we have to go back to the details. I've not seen the details yet um, in terms of what the IMF really meant. But general understanding of a relief, it's, to me, it's a remission which is... Um, a cancellation of debt, um, you know, and the 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 business, the the country would not have to, um, you know, you know, service that. I mean, a, in a in a future period. Yeah. Um, so, Wani, you can you can please add yeah. on that. Yeah. No, I think uh, pretty much, Sua, so you've covered everything because uh, my knowledge of debt relief too is either a cancellation, be impartial or in full. Sometimes debt relief also can involve to ensure that the debt is not going to grow anymore. In other words, you suspend the interest, whatever amount you are owing me, that's what they are going to pay. So, but like Swa mentioned, the critical thing is, uh, personally, I haven't seen the terms of that debt relief. Some debt relief may come with some terms as well. So I haven't seen what are the conditions that are behind this particular debt relief that they've given to Gambia. I, I, I know that they say there's a debt relief program, but whether it's a part, is partial, is it a suspension, or is there any other conditions behind it? And I think that conditions as accountants or economics is what we are always interested in, so that you don't take a deadly from me and you have other impact on my other side of my economy. But I'm not expecting uh -huh. that to come in this COVID-19 situation. Absolutely, absolutely. That's, that's true. Um, to the next question. Um, I think um, asked by Ismail Akul, how can Gambian commercial banks manage their liquidity level? Okay, all right. So in terms of liquidity for Gambian banks, I think the, one of the critical things is central banks has to play a key role 
like we see happening in other countries. Because for the Gambian banks, we are very small. We have enough liquidity from the last report we, we've seen. We have enough liquidity, we have enough capital. But to manage that during in the, in the amid of COVID-19, we need central bank support. You, they have to work with the central bank to see what mechanisms do we have. Where if some banks are more liquid than the others, we may have to open up the interbank market. We may have to sell some of our investment instruments. Like if you, I know some banks are sitting on treasury bills and bonds, we may have to sell them off because liquidity is the first thing for a bank. I always tell people that the bank's first job is to manage liquidity. It's not profitability. Because the money that you have, a lot of the money you have is the shareholders' money. It's not the, I mean, it's the depositors' money. It's not the shareholders' money. If you check your depositors' money, most of the time is more than your shareholders' money. So therefore, our first job as bankers is to manage that liquidity. Sell off your securities if it's necessary. Uh, take some placements uh, back if it's necessary. Let's talk to central bank to support the system because the, if they don't support the system, you guys will stop lending. So I think these are the few options you have. At this stage, if you want to approach the Western countries to lend to you as a bank, the probability of them giving you money is very low or they will do it at a very expensive rate. If you are from a parent company, they are very strong enough, they may give you liquidity. These are the few options since Gambian banks cannot even issue a bond. Let me say they have not ever issued a bond. Not, not they cannot, but they, they haven't issued their own bonds yet. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's a good one. Um, maybe we will take now, we're basically running out of time. Mr. Swa, um, yes. You can unmute Mr. Swa, sir. Yes. Okay. Do you add on okay. something? Yes, I, I, yeah. So thanks. I can. I think um, Sawani um, really, um, you know, extensively answered that. Um, just to say, um, in situations where you don't have access or investments with um, the central bank that you can um, really count on now, and and of course, you know, focus more on um, other other liquidity. Generation tool, but I think you know, as as a bank, you should also, um, you know, it's it will be very important today to defy your expenses. Okay, so it is still liquidity. Um, so you can really defy on your expenses, especially your capital expenditures, which is which is critical. I mean, you know, you need you need you need you need those liquidities. Um, those monies in house to be able to you know operate in a in a different fashion. I think um, we also like I said initially you know right sizing. We I mean we probably if this thing prolong there is no way we can escape none of us. So effectively, uh, it's something that could be now in the back of our minds to ensure that you know to save liquidity. Our cost you know probably may be something that the um, banks may not want to take now you know but we are not there yet and the banks generally in gambia are so far liquid yeah thank you very much i think um we're a bit running out of time but i'll just post two questions and um we will get it at that um for now and we'll be more than happy to answer the other questions maybe via email or they can contact us on email if they have any question so the first question is from maria majalo is, uh, she is asking, the Gambia is one of the countries that relies on remittance for GDP, like the first speaker presented, which is Mr. Sua, that there will be lower remittances rate during the pandemic. My question, how can the government keep remittance flowing during COVID-19? How? Is there is any possibility that the government can use to ensure remittances are received? Um, question to you, sir. Um, policy wise, I'm not sure, um, because these are uh, monies coming outside, um, the Gambia. Um, so except the government probably would bring in some kind of a social intervention to support respective household, which probably would take in place of remittances. Um, but assuming there is remittance flows, people are sending, um, their, you know, sending money and the government is looking at um, remittance houses um, as non-essential business, probably a policy shift here where they will allow them to operate uh, and to ensure that people get through their monies. 
and and we are not in situations where there is some kind of um, you know fiscal or some kind of a tax or any other implications I am aware of which could have been lifted to ensure that you know people receive their monies in full but except the other thing is um, you know the the government so no no major intervention in my opinion currently what the government can do um, to you know get people send money to their families into the Gambia yeah, I mean I think it's, yeah I see a similar views here because the concern is the problem is not just peculiar to Gambia alone. So I think my worry for, for most people is the fact that where they are in America, UK, or anywhere, are they even having a job now? But without that job, they can't send a remittance. Assuming that they have the money to encourage people, maybe government may have to ask maybe fee reductions, negotiate fees. If the fees are reduced, some people may be motivated and say, okay, during this period, if you send a certain amount of quantity, we'll reduce the fees, you know? Probably just Gambia, but in some countries, fees are being regulated too. Okay, thank you. The last question um, from Pa Malik again. He said, given the current lockdown, um, cash shipment for Nostro account is becoming a challenge. How do you think banks can manage this? Good one. I said the same question with him, actually. Okay, so, so this, is, this, is, this is a challenge. Um, I think first, I think there is two challenges. I think we know, um, you know, most of the banks use, um, you know, um, a certain company in the UK, which even before the crisis was having, um, you know, financial difficulties. So I think even before this crisis, we already had um, some of the banks crumbling in the Gambia to be able to get their monies out. So it is, I think it's a peculiar business, even before the crisis. You get physical notes shipped outside um, the Gambia. Um, you know, it happens too in other regions, like the you know most of good business in the Central African region as this as well. Um, but when airlines are not working and and there is no other form of you know operations, what and there is uh, foreign currency piled in the Gambia, I, I, I think except you know the central bank and the banks would, you know, consider, you know, using this, um, you know, through some form of charter, chartered flights or, or, or something like that, because um, most of the cash um, goes through commercial planes. And if commercial planes are not coming in through Gambia, and it's really something that is important, you know, for the sector, important for the economy, it means um, there could be um, you know, central banks and the bank and probably central government find a way of, you know, sipping those strings um, through chartered flights or through our ports, which probably took take a longer time or, you know, to, to get to the destinations. Um, this, is, this is one thing. But like I said, Gambia already, um, we are having challenges, you know, assuming even without the pandemic, you know, sipping these monies out. Because you know some of these companies doing it in the Gambia and are already having challenges in in their operations, so it could even be risky using them as we speak here. Oh. So okay, I, I I won't speak to it directly. I will not speak to the car segment directly. For me, maybe in the form of the closing remarks, is the need and it's important for Gambia, Gambia government, Gambia private sector individuals for us to invest in technology. Whatever thing we are seeing today, whether it's growth or decline, for most of the things, they are results of our past decisions. Countries have started putting uh, cashless policies, which they are embracing that to stop reducing or printing money. Countries like Rwanda, I, I think it's sad up till this year in 2020, when we have a country like us still complain, how are we to ship our money? We should try to encourage digitalization of our system so that people will pay us through POAs and transfers. In that case, we would have transferred money. Where I work, we are still working. We are still doing our transfers. Gambia is so small for us to rely too much on the cars because we failed to invest. If this was Dallas here, I'd be much worried. But we are now taking people's currency in dollars. Is it that we can't use POS? I think we need to drive to digitalize collecting those foreign currencies through digital means. It will save the country money. It will save the banking system money. 
and it will give us opportunity to be able to sell more. That's what I just want to say, I mean, as a form of a, a different I mean, conclusion. That, that, that is a great, great intervention, um, Mr. Sawane. I think the world is moving into digitalization and Gambia should not be an exception to be behind. Um, all these problems are coming as a result of, like you said, the decisions that we have made in the past. But um, thank God that we are seeing some changes. Today, we can happily say that there is improvement. Um, today, this webinar has probably never happened in the, in the finance profession, and today is happening. So I think it's a great step that we are moving or we are taking to make sure that there is a change or a paradigm shift as far as our operations are concerned. But again, we have some policymakers who are here, probably who have listened to this, and definitely they will take some of these things serious. But there is, I, I, there is one question which is of interest probably to all of us or all the participants, which indicates my, this guy is having funds in the bank. Now, what or where is the best way to invest these funds right now? Do I need to convert it to dollar and invest in dollar, hedging for future appreciation of the dollar and resell? But what investment, if I have a car style in the bank, what investment should I do to maximize my return after this pandemic? Okay, okay. quick one. Since you are closing, I think uh, two things. You already he mentioned one of them. That's if you want to convert it, that is, again, you have data, you believe that exchanges will keep on going faster. But the other option is treasury bills. Treasury bills, when I last checked, three month treasury bill is paying about 6%. So if you don't want to leave it in a savings account like that, give the money to central government. I mean, I don't know if they, if you have money in the bank, they are all giving that money to central government because people are not lending. And except you trust somebody whose business is also very likely strong, but is struggling now, you lend to them at a much higher rate, 10, 15%. I grow, we have done those things where we give people 10%, 15%. This is the time we need to solve some people. Depends on the amount of money you have, if you believe in. But of course, every investment has its own risk. Yeah, I think that that's 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 spot on, Sawani. Um, so, just to encourage that you know, um, investment is different. So, if you think you have excess cash, you know, you can also look in look at as young Gambians, see how we can invest in 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 in, 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 in technology farms. I mean, invest in 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 something, not only you know financial instruments, but we can invest. Um, in some, we don't have stock markets in the Gambia, but of course, you know, this is where we are all um, looking into, um, you know, investments on, on technology. Um, it's, 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 it's not something. And you can also look at uh, and discuss within your friends and, and partner. You can set up something, um, you know, where you can make, um, you know, returns out of the pandemic today. Um, opportunities would be that. Uh, really doing it and in, you know bring, coming together uh, you know going for a retreat um, finding ways of really making investment I think this is this is this is very important and um, uh, since we are probably closing I think my final remarks would be to um, encourage engagement within young people I mean so we I think we are the future we really need to see how best we can have much more constructive engagements within ourselves, um, organizing much more forums like this to ensure that, you know, we um, all are aligned and we are having, you know, some kind of a similar thought. Um, it is important that we come together, engage, um, you know, regulators, in, engage decision makers. Um, I think um, banks in the Gambia were very successful in that coming together as a group, uh, CFOs of banks and through the IFRS, um, you know, in, you know, in 2012, um, you know, we came together, you know, we had a one point uh, for the regulators, we intervened, we worked together with consultants, our inputs have been recognized. I think um, as accountants, we can come together to make sure our accounting bodies are active. During these times, you know, when there is something that is coming and it is industry-wise, it's something that we can come together, issue our statements, or engage the, um, certain sectors, um, kind of a lobby group to ensure that um, you know the um, you know we, our our inputs are noted, and we are also able to influence 
um, decision makers as may be appropriate. I think it's more of engagement within ourselves and the decision makers to ensure that you know our input as young people is always seen and recognized. Thank you. Um, thank you very much, Mr. Sua. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Sawane, for those insightful presentation. And thank you very much, um, participants, for the questions. Um, unfortunately, we are unable to answer all the questions still piling up, but we'll be happy um, to basically respond via email if you have any, any question um, that you want these participants to, to, to answer. Um, but before I leave you guys, I'll just need to thank you once again but to inform you that iGrow is here to stay and iGrow is here to see that the profession moves forward, Gambia moves forward, Africa moves forward, and the globe is at a better scale. Um, and the idea is we are going to continue engaging and communicating with the populace to ensure that we are all informed of the new development in the globe. And the idea or the plan that I grow is once is to make a future training um, which is on either career management for young accountant or young professional or how do we uplift the skill the modern skills that the accountants need um, to ensure that they compete globally but we'll be more than happy again to receive pro proposed topics that you will want us to discuss on a webinar or a future webinar but again our training will continue after this pandemic, live training, live sessions, we have had one last year, and we want to continue the same. We want to partner with people. We want to help young people to grow, and we want to help this profession to grow. Thank you very much, and see you next time. I hope it was a great session. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you, guys.